Highly portable, very affordable and certified to run Netflix and Amazon Prime Video in full HD, it's a tiny dongle that makes your TV smarter and it's called the Mi TV Stick. But is it worth buying? Time to inspect! Hey, welcome! Tech for All Channel, Michael speaking, and here's something awesome you may find interesting, the Mi TV Stick. After more than two years of silence, Xiaomi are back with showing us a smart dongle to enhance the functions of your TV. This little HDMI stick solves your problems in case you don't have a smart TV, or if it is not too smart, or in case it doesn't have YouTube, Netflix, Prime Video and so on, or if you're sick of connecting your laptop again and again. These dongles have become so powerful and useful that maybe 90% of the time I'm in front of the TV, it's because I'm using any of these gadgets either for gaming or Google streaming or most often Netflix. The Mi TV Stick was recently launched, priced at around 40 euro, and likely it will be around 40 dollars when it appears in the United States. That makes it cheaper than the predecessor and ultra popular Mi Box S, but there's a catch, the Mi TV Stick is full HD only, meaning that you won't get 4K support and that will be a serious drawback for some people. Although, it's quite important to remind you that most of the streaming content online is still 1080p, most Netflix subscriptions are at the same resolution unless you want to pay more for 4K, and most of the big YouTube creators still use 1080p as main resolution, so 4K is a privilege, but not a must yet. There also should be at some point Mi TV Stick 4K according to the rumors, which I'm very much looking forward to. I couldn't get any confirmation from Xiaomi themselves, but I guess they will follow Amazon's approach to that. You may well know about the popular Fire TV Stick series, which are also having their 1080p and 4K variations, so my guess is that Xiaomi will try to replicate this product line with Android TV. Exploring the hardware part will take us only a couple of minutes. The unboxing experience is actually very good. Xiaomi keep the well-known orange colors for their TV box-related editions. I need to underline that this device runs Google certified Android TV, meaning that every update and enhancement for this OS is approved and checked by Google themselves. So there is no room for bloatware or shady apps, which is quite good. The box is advertising the major key points, full HD support, Google Assistant, Chromecast and more features that we are going to talk about in a moment. Let's check out the geeky stuff. Processor, it's Cortex A53 based with maximum speed of 1.2 GHz, 1 GB RAM, Mali 450 MP graphics adapter, around 8 GB storage, dual band Wi Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, micro USB port, that's for charging, Dolby and DTS support, and no other options for physical connection of peripherals unless these peripherals use Bluetooth. It's designed to be as small and compact as possible, and the size its not much larger than a flash drive. If the specs say nothing to you. Well, the processor is rather entry-level, you can't expect great performance, but seems to be about right for full HD video playback, for Netflix and so on. Gaming? We're going to talk about that in a bit. Xiaomi have done a great job helping you with the installation instructions. It's really super simple and basic. Plug into HDMI port of your TV, connect power through this micro USB port, and you can even source power from USB port of your TV if there's such available, and then use the remotes to finish the setup. Takes literally a few moments, and because it has good Google Assistant integration, you may use your smartphone for finishing that setup. Very important, you need to have a working Wi Fi at home. The interface is the well-known Android TV launcher, and if you're wondering if you can customize the appearance, yes, as long as you stick to the default one. You can rearrange the channels, but that's pretty much all of it. There's an off-the-record option to use a third-party launcher, however, it will require reprogramming the buttons of the remote, and I'm not sure if the effort is really worth it. Since a few months, Google have decided to deprecate the support for third-party launchers on Android TV. Still, navigation is easy to follow, and once you're connected to the internet, your whole feed is going to be full of custom recommendations based on your own taste and preferences. Netflix is going to show your recently watched TV shows or give you some suggestions for new ones, and the same for YouTube, Amazon Prime Video and even Google Play Store. Since you have no USB port to connect external drives, your best shot is connecting to a shared drive or NAS and using FX File Explorer, it was quite easy connecting to mine. 
Play Store is of course essential. You have access to all Android TV certified content. You may also run some native Android apps with variable success. I've tried Geekbench 4 to check the CPU capabilities. And it showed results which are close to the LG Nexus 5 with Snapdragon 800. So the overall performance is up to par with premium smartphones of like 5 generations back. I think it's understandable, considering the small size and cheap price. One thing which is very important to mention, under high load, the device tends to quickly heat up and you're going to notice CPU throttling, everything may become laggier and slowly responsive, which means that the system is running the CPU at lower rate in order to cool down the temperature. This behavior was driving me crazy for a couple of days and it even got to a reboot when running one of the intensive benchmarks, but after I collected some footage with the TV stick which was good enough to show it to you, I got brave and decided to open it and figure out if there's a way to improve the cooling. If the cover is removed, you have access to the heatsink and in combination with the fan, it suddenly has become a very well-performing device. I'm not sure if that behavior concerns only my unit, but it's definitely something to consider. YouTube and Netflix are unlikely to get you into trouble, but if you want to do some gaming, then definitely try to find a fan. I finally found a good way to utilize this portable USB fan, which a friend of mine gave me a few years ago. Funny enough, another Xiaomi gadget. Guess someone was able to foresee the future a few years ago. Video playback is of course superb. Hardware level integration for encoding VP9 and 10, H.265 and all the popular video codecs except AV1 codec, which YouTube is slowly migrating to. For sound enthusiasts, Dolby and DTS certified. And with that, we can conclude that multimedia is well supported if you can live with the fact that everything is going out through the HDMI port. The remote is of course fantastic, with these buttons and its evolution to the predecessor, dedicated buttons for the most popular streaming services these days, and that's very, very convenient. The Mi TV boxes have always been among the very few devices which have certified Netflix and give you the chance to enjoy Amazon Prime Video both. I've also tried a few games, and if they're not too graphics intensive, the gameplay is in fact alright. Dead Trigger and Rush Rally were running very smoothly with default settings. There were moments when I felt that Rush Rally was causing some lags due to throttling, but they were really quickly going away. Rio Racing 3 was, however, too heavy, and the box didn't even manage to load the game. Guess Asphalt 8 and similar games will feel the same way too. So you may try other games like Beach Buggy Racing, in case you want to have some gameplay fun. Wide variety of Bluetooth joysticks are supported. And because I often get this question asked, I can't really get you a link for this particular one, because it's fairly old model, but you can find links to the rest of the devices shown in the description below the video. So at the end, I'm with mixed feelings about the Mi TV Stick. This is the very first batch of the item and the very first software release, so from here, pretty sure that Xiaomi will catch up with good and reliable updates and improve the experience a lot. Overall, this TV stick is the easiest way to hook your favorite content to any TV or screen with HDMI input and is perfect should you want to get full HD output from YouTube, Netflix or Amazon video collections. For gaming, quite limited, but still possible if you're planning to do that occasionally or with not too intensive games. And the very big drawback I can point to, the high temperature and the CPU throttling which I hope is either limited to my own unit or something that will get updated through software. Looks like this stick is going to be the entry level of Xiaomi's Android TV family. 40 bucks and you have built-in Chromecast, Netflix and lots of other content streaming options with the necessary certification levels and the size of a big flash drive. Should you want something more capable, like a 4K device, the Mi Box S is still available and we're looking forward to the Mi TV Stick 4K, which while not officially confirmed, is likely going to be the next logical step. As usual, for sharing your opinion and follow-up questions, I'll be keeping an eye on the comment section below. Links to most of the products shown you will find in the description below the video. I'm Michael and would greatly appreciate if you support the channel by subscribing and sharing the video with your friends. Take good care of yourself and I'll see you in a few days' time. Bye!